What do you get when you mix world-class engineering and hand-built precision and then drop it into the water at dawn? A bunch of Olympic medals and pure, unadulterated joy. All delivered by Hudson Boatworks. Ah, oh, what a beautiful day. Daddy, do you want a boat? I'll buy you one. <laughs> Thanks, monkey. Oh, look, that's a skull. That's a single-seater rowing boat. And over there is an eight-person rowing boat with their coach in the front. That baby and the entire line of Hudson Boats are incredible. Since 1981, Hudson Boats has been the choice for athletes of all levels, from high school athletes all the way up to Olympians. And they're manufactured right here in London, Ontario. Tucked into an industrial space near Fanshawe Lake, this facility is feeding the need for speed. Every boat we built here is a high performance rowing shell, but it ranges from single person boat for one person up to an eight for eight people plus a coxmates. And in between those classes are fours and pair doubles. The business started in 1981 in a garage right here in Old South. But later that same decade, Hudson Boat Works was reborn. They decided to leave ordinary behind and shoot for the top. We were focused on building high performance luxury racing shells and all our efforts were put into that effort to make the best rowing shell in the world to compete at the highest level. And that shift with an investment into researching new materials quickly paid off. From 1984, the first Olympic medal to present day, Hudson has won over 90 medals at Olympic and Senior World Championships, many more at under 23 and junior levels. We've gone from strength to strength since the Beijing Olympics in 2008, where we released our proprietary Shark Carbon, which was a product that was a collaboration with carbon makers to give us a proprietary material. And today, we sit as one of the top three boat makers in the world. Our sales figures would probably indicate that we would be a top three company in terms of volume of sales. At the top of our product line, we have the USP, which stands for Ultimate Shark Predator. And that product line provides us a platform to continually innovate and push the needle on R&D. The USP product is our, it's really our flagship and you can almost make it akin to a concept car. This is every bit of technology that we can possibly throw into the rowing shell is in that model. There are some commonalities in a boat because a boat has to obviously fit certain guidelines within the sport regulation. But Hudson, I believe, is a company that has been able to push that envelope more than anybody else and kind of work outside the box of typical naval architecture. So come on, let's go inside and see how the Hudson Shark makes it to water. As you walk the floor, it's clear this process is people-driven. And one of the company's strengths was a shift to make all their parts in-house. One of the highlights of our machining area is a machine called a Datron ML Cube, which is a very unique high-speed aluminum machining center. It's incredibly precise and it's incredibly fast. The spindle turns at 40,000 RPM, and it chews through aluminum as if it was butter. Another machine we have in our repertoire is a plastic injection molding machine. And we use that both for making parts that are lightweight, strong, and don't corrode in a saltwater environment. We made a decision to bring most of the machining and molding operations in-house, which allows us to fine-tune designs very rapidly, make subtle changes, and really produce a product that is very unique and incredibly customized. When a boat's released to production, it starts with a CNC fabric cutting machine, which is really a high precision machine that cuts all the fabric, and we're essentially creating a jigsaw puzzle, or the parts for a jigsaw puzzle. By cutting it that way, the parts are very accurate. That carbon fiber, again, is something developed just for Hudson. It has the resin embedded right in the material, instead of being poured on after the fact. 
Prepreg allows you to have an exact specification on the distribution and the weight of the resin or the glue inside the carbon fiber. When the pieces of Prepreg carbon fiber come from the CNC fabric cutter to the mold, they come in a kit. The lasers on the ceiling create precision to ensure that those pieces can only go together in one way, like a jigsaw puzzle. Renee here is using our iPad control plan to ensure that the laser is marking the boat for this specific mold in the places where the pieces need to be put in to ensure that the boat is put together in the proper format. Consistency in the product is incredibly important within a sport like ours where it is working on the fine end where tens of seconds matter. The quality control in this factory is second to none. Reinforcing carbon is added to stress points on the hull. Through experimentation and engineering and testing over the years, we've determined where material needs to be in the boat to give it the optimum strength and stiffness for rowing. Along the gunnels of the boat, you'll see a large amount of material, specifically where the riggers mount to the boat. And that's really where the bulk of the rowing load is, is applied to the shell itself. Following that, the next layer they'll put on is a honeycomb core. So that's a high performance, it's an aerospace material and it's incredibly stiff in the compression direction but flexible otherwise. This honeycomb in this direction is very weak. In a compressive force, it's incredibly strong. The boat would be able to have impact on the hull and be able to withstand a significant amount of pressure in the direction of the force that it would be hit with. The honeycomb, again, is featherweight, allows it thickness so it's not flimsy, but does not add much weight to the boat. After the honeycomb core is put in to give it the thickness, we then do the exact same thing on the inner skin. We lay down the prepreg carbon fiber on the inner side of the honeycomb, which creates a carbon honeycomb carbon sandwich. The process after that is then laying down a release bag breather cloth, and a vacuum bag. And then, then that effectively is hooked up to vacuum lines and the outer skin is sucked tight down onto the mold to give a mold shape or fair shape of the, of the hull. Then it's into a custom oven capable of accommodating even eight-seater boats or one giant submarine sandwich. To cure the specific epoxy system that we use, the boats will go into the oven and they'll be ramped up at a specific ramp rate for a number of hours until they hit 125 degrees. Elsewhere in the factory, other parts are being manufactured to be ready for next steps. That includes a proprietary rigor crafted as a single piece for absolute strength and durability. It's molded under extremely high pressures in a, a very rigid closed compression mold. We had to make spe very specific bladders to be able to do that. But what we end up with is a carbon fiber rigger that is actually more durable, stiffer, and lighter than the aluminum equivalent. A prefab bulkhead and the foot deck are glued into place. Practical, but also critical to the boat stiffness. Then it's all trimmed, and the holes for hardware are drilled with another precise CNC machine. Precision when you're building a rowing shell is, is, is incredibly important to the customer. You, know, you arrive out in the field and you're trying to rig this boat up for an Olympic final, and if you have to bend, twist, and pry things into position, it does not inspire confidence. Then every hull gets tested for peak performance. This is another machine that we built in-house, and it does a very precise torsional and longitudinal stress test and if it's not within a couple percent of each other, then that boat is not released to the customer. The hull is then sanded to a perfect finish, removing all the imperfections of the pre-preg carbon and primed to go on to its first customization, the paint job. The paint job that goes on these boats is really important for a number of reasons. One, we need to protect the carbon from UV light. The resin is vulnerable to UV damage, so it has a high level of UV inhibitors, which make the boat last a long time. Beyond that, the surface finish of the boat has to be very smooth. There is a performance impact to the, the quality of the surface finish. Rowers are looking for a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth of a second. 
Races have been won and lost by margins that are too small to see with the naked eye. So if that boat has a surface finish on it that's a little bit too coarse or a little coarser than the competitor's boat, then potentially they're giving up time and we just simply would not do that. The boat gets close to final assembly. All of the componentry that gets put in that boat is pre-assembled in our parts room, kitted, and then delivered out to the assembly area. One of the strengths of Hudson is the fact that you know, we'll build a large number of boats every year, and every single one is customized in some way to the athlete and the coach's specifications. That's looking at the cockpit and how the athlete fits into that cockpit. We have people on staff, from our engineers to a PhD biomechanist, that can work with our clients that have a desire to try and custom fit themselves and ergonomically get the most out of their boat. Certainly the technology and the process we use to build the boats has, has led to a lot of success in the market for us. But ultimately none of that is possible without the strength of our employee group. From the craftsmen that build the boats, to the engineers that do the design work, to the machinists that make the components. That combined effort has led this London company to the podium time and time again. The tremendous amount of pride sitting with the employees of the company, watching say in Olympic Games uh, and watching a product that was built here, racing on a world stage. Which boat do you like? I like the eight-seater. That is a beautiful boat, you're right. That's 